This video will help to prepare you for Experiment 2 in Biology 1440. During this lab, you will use the mass balance equation. You will demonstrate proper pipette and spectrophotometer use. You will perform a controlled experiment on the effects of ethanol on cell membranes. You will use the Lambert-Beer equation to convert your absorbance data into concentration. You will then graph that data and include a caption, and you will use that data to design an experiment for the following lab. In lecture, you will have already learned about the biological hierarchy from the atom to the biosphere. In this week's lab, we're going to be studying the effects of ethanol on the cells of beetroots. Beets are an organism, beta vulgaris, member of the plant kingdom. They have roots, which is an organ, and those organs consist of tissues, which consist of cells. Those cells have organelles, and the organelle that we're most interested in this week is the central vacuole which is basically a storage vesicle in the middle of that cell. It's a, it's a membrane that stores items inside. Like animal cells, plant cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane. That plasma membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Within that phospholipid bilayer are other macromolecules such as proteins and, and we can see here we have carbohydrates, carbohydrate side chains on some of those proteins, uh, so glycoproteins and things. Now certain chemicals such as surfactants like dish soap may damage the phospholipid bilayer. Other chemicals such as ethanol may damage the proteins in that layer, poking holes in the membrane, allowing for cell leakage. Now plant cells, as I said earlier, have a cell membrane just like animal cells. It consists of a phospholipid bilayer. Plants also have a cell wall. Now the cell wall and the membrane are very different structures. The membrane is just like an animal cells. The cell wall is a fibrous structure that helps to support the structure of the cell, but it does not prevent chemicals from entering the cell. That is the role of the cell membrane. Now in the middle of the cell here, we see the central vacuole. The central vacuole has a membrane known as the tonoplast. That membrane is also composed of a phospholipid bilayer with membrane, with a, so it, well, it is a membrane with proteins embedded within it. So if we add ethanol to this, to this uh, uh, test tube containing this cell, let's say we add ethanol, that ethanol, if it is able to damage the proteins in the plasma membrane, will enter the cell and then will also damage the proteins in the tonoplast. If that is the case, then the tonoplast will leak. And the tonoplast contains beta cyanin, which is the red stuff that we see in beets. This is why the beet is such an excellent experimental organism for this lab. We can easily see cell membrane damage. So there's beta cyanin inside the central vacuole here. If the central vacuole is damaged, beta cyanin will leak out into the test tube, causing an obvious change in the color of the solution in that test tube. Now, visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which includes everything from radio waves to, waves to gamma rays. But visible light consists of about 750 nanometers to 400 nanometer wavelengths. That spans red to violet. We often use this symbol lambda to indicate wavelength. We can use a spectrophotometer to measure the wavelengths of light being absorbed by 
are leaked beta cyanin. That may sound like an odd, odd thing to do, but it's actually a very interesting thing you can do to actually quantify the amount of beta cyanin that is leaked out of your cell membrane. So in science, we, we want to make qualitative observations. Do you see a color change in the test tube? But when possible, we also want to make quantitative measurements. And that's, that is what we're using the spectrophotometer for. So you've placed a beetroot in an ethanol solution. It has become red as you've damaged the cell membrane and the tonoplast. Now you can take that sample of red ethanol solution and put it in a spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer will shine various wavelengths of light through that sample and record how much of each of those wavelengths has been absorbed by that specimen. How much was actually absorbed. Now remember, I'm saying absorbed, not how much passed through, but how much was absorbed by that specimen. We then look to see which color of light at which wavelength was most absorbed. And that wavelength is known as lambda max, the amount. So, so we're looking to see which wavelength of light was most absorbed. That is lambda max. We look at absorbance at lambda max, and we plug that number into the lambert beer equation, which you can read about in your lab manual you will then be able to actually determine the concentration of beta cyanin that is leaked out of that cell. So we're using a plant cell, a plant that makes a red solution, making it easy to see cell damage, but we can use that knowledge to better understand all cells because all plants, all animals, all have cell membranes that share many features, including that plasma membrane, that bilipid layer with, with proteins embedded in it, either, either uh, transmembrane proteins or proteins that are stuck to the surface. They all have membranes with proteins. So by understanding the effects of ethanol on a plant, we can better understand the effects of ethanol on a mammal, such as ourselves.